This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, present Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. But Nick, how do you know it couldn't have been suicide? The evidence shows it, Patsy. But the windows were locked on the inside. No one went through the door. If it was murder, how was it done? The same evidence, Patsy. The bottle tells how and why it was murder. Now for the case of the Crystal Prophecy. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by Old Dutch Glenter. Our story begins in Nick's office about 10 o'clock one bright sunny spring morning. Well, I'll be darned. What is it, Patsy? Nick, I'm following the latest records on suicides, and they show that during the past six weeks, four women have committed suicide. Oh, what's so curious about that? Well, each of these women was in her middle 30s, each was a widow with quite a bit of money, and in each case, the police couldn't find a single clue to the reason for the suicides. Hmm. When was the last one? Night before last. Uh, Mrs. Doris Manson. Nick, don't you think there might be some connection between these suicides? Maybe. Certainly looks like a lot of coincidence if there isn't. That's what I thought. Are we going to do anything about it? We are. We're going to finish the report I'm working on, and then we're going down to talk to Maddie about this this epidemic of suicides. Good afternoon, Hassan. I hope I'm not late. Pleased to enter, Mim Saib. You are expected. Uh, I get more excited every time I come here. Is Rashid El Bey ready to receive me? Mim Saib will please to sit there. I go tell Master. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, Mrs. Langdon. It is well that you arrived. Oh, I couldn't be late to see you, Master. I do so want to hear more. Then what you have heard has pleased you? Oh, yes. Everything has happened just as you said it would. Just after I left you the other day, I dropped my purse and a man picked it up for me. It was a man named Robert Winter, just as you said it would be. This Robert Winter, he pleased you? Oh, yes. He's a perfect gentleman and so handsome. I think that he's romantically inclined and I thought perhaps... I understand, madam. Please to draw near... And look into the crystal. Do not allow your attention to wander for an instant. O oh, ball of ever-knowing light, bring to your surface the truth about Robert Winter and Martha Langdon. Make the future clear that we may read it. The ball begins to clear. A picture is forming. I see. I see. No. No, oh, it cannot be. Huh? Oh, ball of crystal, are you sure? Oh, what's the matter, Elbe? I am sorry, madam. I cannot tell you what the crystal ball has shown to be the future for you. It is better that you remain in ignorance. No. If there's anything bad, I demand that you tell me. The crystal ball shows, madam, that you will shortly take your own life. Oh, but that's absurd. I have no reason to do away with myself. I am sorry. I am only the instrument through which the pictures are made clear. But now that I know about it, isn't there any way the future can be changed? It is difficult, madame. Very difficult. Oh, I'll do anything, anything. Can't you help me? It is possible, madame. How? It is a long and difficult process. It will mean that I must deny myself to all my other disciples. Much time will be lost. Much money will be lost. Oh, I have money. I'll give you money. It will take a great deal of money, madam. I shall have to devote all my time to watching over you until the danger is past. How much would that be? It would be $100,000. Oh, no. I, I can't pay that much. It is well known that madame wears pearls worth that amount. 
give up my pearl? Pearls mean nothing, madame, when the owner is dead. No. I have enough willpower to keep from killing myself. And if necessary, I can hire somebody to watch me day and night for much less than $100,000. As you wish, madame. But it would not be wise I won't to... pay that much to anybody for something I should be able to do myself. No, thank you. As you please, madame. Good day. And may I wish you everything that fortune will bring you. You know as well as I do, Nick, that suicides run in waves. I know, I know, that's true, Matty. But it seems to me that there's too much coincidence in these four. Each of them is too much like the other. Oh, that's crazy, Nick. The first one drove her car off a cliff. The next jumped off a building. The third fixed herself up in a closed garage with a car motor running. And this last one jumps in front of a subway train. But, Matty, did you notice that each of these suicides was a woman in her middle 30s, a widow, and that each had a considerable amount of money? Sure, sure, I know all that, but what's it prove? Now, look, Nick, my squad investigated every one of these deaths, and we didn't find anything but suicide. Okay, Mary, okay. Ah, oh, Nick, you're getting all hot and bothered about something. It's just a coincidence. And that's all. Oh, Robert, how nice. Come in. Hello, Martha, my dear. I hurried over as soon as I got your phone call. What's wrong? It rashed El Bay. He, he told me the most awful thing. Really? I've known him for a long time. I never heard of him saying anything that didn't come true. Does everything really come true? Indeed it does. I'll never forget poor Doris Manson. He told her that she was going to take her own life. And did she? Yes, poor thing. She was standing on a subway platform one day when the train came along. She jumped in front of it. Oh, how horrible. Robert, Elbey told me that I was going to kill myself. Oh, that's terrible. Isn't there anything we can do? Elbey said that he could do something about it, but it would cost me $100,000. I told him I couldn't afford to pay that much. Not when your life is in the balance? No. I I can't believe I'm going to commit suicide. I've never known Elbey to be wrong. I think it would be better for you to pay him, Martha. I'm not going to do it. Very well, my dear. You know you can count on me for any help you need. Oh, thank you, Robert. I know I can. You know, how about a glass of your fine port? It'll do us both good. Oh, I think that's an excellent idea. I'll get it. I must say I admire your courage, my dear. Oh, I'm not brave. I just won't part with all my money for something I don't think will happen. Well, the wine will make you feel better. Wine always helps. And now, Martha, to your health and long life. Hello. Hello, Martha. This is Camelia Huntington. I just called to see if you'd received my invitation. Yes, it's... Lying here in front of me. I just know you're going to enjoy Rashid El Bey. He's such an interesting person. Yes, he is. But whatever's the matter, my dear? You sound as though you don't like El Bey. Oh, it, it isn't that, Camelia. It's, it's just that he told me something very unpleasant. He did? Whatever was it? I'd rather not discuss it, Camelia. Oh, look, Martha, why don't you try him again? Perhaps he's looked into his crystal again and has seen something for the better. Do you... Do you think there's a chance? I most certainly do. Think about it, dear. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow at my party. Goodbye. Goodbye, Camelia. And thanks. Try him again. Yes, I'll do it. Why didn't I think of that before? Oh, I'm sure he's seen something else. Yes? Is, is this Hassan? Yes. Who speaks, please? This is Mrs. Langdon. I've got to speak to El Bay right away. One moment, Mentaib. <sighs> Good evening, Mrs. Langdon. Oh, I, I just had to call you, El Bay. I, I wondered if you would look into your crystal ball again, see if it said the same thing. I have looked many times, madam. The pictures have not changed. Oh. 
span of your life is growing short. Oh, no. I beg of you to reconsider before it is too late. Well, I... I won't reconsider paying you $100,000, if that's what you mean. Alas, then, what is written will be so. I am sorry, madame. The sands of your life run out rapidly. Oh. oh, I never should have called him in the first place. It scares me so. Perhaps I'd feel better if I drank a glass of wine. Now, maybe this will lift me out of this terrible mood. I certainly hope so. Uh, what? Very nice of you to pick me up this morning, Nick. Sorry, right, Patsy. I just happen to be going by. Or oh, switch on the radio, will you? Police band? Sure. Oh, gosh, it's a beautiful morning. Car 18, go to Hemlock and Toyd. Reported burglary. Car 43, go to 54th and 9th Avenue. <laughs> Traffic light out of Oh, board. what a charming radio personality. Cars 256 and 257 get to 1485 North End Avenue. Assist Sergeant Madison what? and Homicide Squad in suicide on premises. That is all. Nick, you don't suppose that could be another... I don't know, but I think we'll find out. We can be there in less than five minutes. <laughs> What's the verdict this time? Oh, I don't know, Nick. I just got here myself. Only had time to find out that this is the same kind of case as the ones we were talking about. What? You mean the one who committed suicide was a woman? Yeah. In her 30s and wealthy? That's right, Patsy. Oh. I suppose if you want to take a look. Yeah, sure, Nick. She's right in here, in the library. Right. Well, there she is. The late Martha Langdon. Hmm. Say the cause of death was cyanide, judging by the smell. Yeah, I noticed the bitter almond smell, too. Did she leave a note, Sergeant? Not that I've been able to find. She didn't leave a note, Patsy. But it looks as if she tried to leave us a message. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? I don't see anything. Well, look, Maddie, in her hand. Oh, I've already looked at that. It's nothing but an invitation to some swank tea party. Come off this afternoon. Well, let me see. Mrs. Camille Huntington requests the pleasure of your presence at an afternoon tea in honor of Rashid El Bay, noted analyst of the Alcos. So on and so forth. Yeah, well, what makes you think that means anything, Nick? Well, how does she happen to be holding it in her hand when she died? Well, she could have picked it up before she knocked herself off. No, 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 I don't think so, Matty. It wouldn't be easy to open a bottle, pour out a drink, and hold onto a card like this at the same time. Mm. She must have put it down before she poured herself the fatal drink. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So she must have made a superhuman effort to pick it up again. Remember, cyanide acts almost instantaneously. I don't know. I think Mrs. Langdon picked this up with the hope that it would lead us to her murderer. Yeah. Murder? What's that? That's right. Martha Langdon was murdered. But oh. how, Nick? The windows are locked and the maid says no one's been here all day. The dame drinks poison and you say she was murdered? I do, I do, Maddie. Smell this bottle of wine. Huh? Say, say. Yes, yes. The bottle has cyanide in it, too. And no one is going to commit suicide by drinking cyanide. Poisons the whole bottle. They only put the poison in the glass. No, Maddie. Martha Langdon was murdered. Now back to the case of the Crystal Prophecy. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As we pick up our story, Nick and Maddie are talking to Robert Winter, who says he hurried over to Martha Langdon's home as soon as he heard of her death. Mr. Winter, do you know anything about this tea Mrs. Camellia Huntington is giving this afternoon? Why, yes, I'm attending the party myself. Well, can you think of any reason why Mrs. Langdon should have picked up this invitation in her dying moments? No, I can't. It'll probably be a very dull affair. Uh-huh. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Winter. Quite all right. I only hope you're able to catch one of those murderers. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Winter. Yes? Did you happen to know a Mrs. Nora Church? Why... Yes. And Mrs. Doris Manson? I... Yes, I did. Thank you, Mr. Winter. Thank you very much. Nick, do you suspect Mr. Winter? I don't know. Hmm. Of course, those specs he wears are enough to make me suspicious of him. Spats aren't evidence, Betsy. (laughs) 
But the fact that Mr. Winter knew at least two of the other dead women is interesting, at least. And the fact that he's going to Mrs. Huntington's party this afternoon also interests me. You think all those other women were murdered, too? I'm positive, Betsy. But proving it is going to be something else. Well, come on. Where to, Nick? I want you to go home and get prettied up. You and I are going to that tea this afternoon. <laughs> Quite a party, isn't it? Nick, you haven't explained how you happen to know Mrs. Huntington so well. Oh, I've known her a long time, Pat. Uh-huh, apparently. When we showed up at the door, she acted as though you were a long lost relative. <laughs> right on. Right, I'll confess. It's very simple. I recovered some jewels for her some years ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it looks as if I'm not going to make good of my promise to Mary. Huh? Told him I'd keep an eye on Winter, but he seems to have disappeared in the crowd. Well, nobody can get out of this room without passing us. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Attention, please, Effendi. Oh, something's going to happen, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Effendi, it is the time for the appearance of my master, the master Rashid Del Bey. Oh, Nick, isn't that a beautiful beard El Bey has? And what a gorgeous costume. Yes, that is quite a costume. Good afternoon, my friends. I am much pleased that you have gathered here to do me honor. I will say no more than tell you it is impossible for me to read my crystal ball before all of you. But I shall be happy to conduct individual readings in a room which our charming hostess has made available. I will retire now to that room. Come on, Bessie. Well, Nick, you're not going to have your fortune told, are you? No, we're going back to the office. Oh, good. You can drop me off at the beauty parlor. Sorry, you'll have to cancel your appointment. Oh, but, Nick, this beauty parlor is supposed to take years off a girl's face. That's it. We're going back to the office, and I'm going to add years to a girl's face. Huh? And that girl is you. <laughs> Patsy? Oh, I hope I don't look as funny as I feel. You don't. Your makeup's fine. You look at least 35. Uh, uh, That's the worst compliment I ever had. Now, Patsy, remember, whatever happens, I want you to play along. And when you enter the master's presence tonight, don't forget whom you're supposed to be. I won't, Nick. Well, here I go. Good luck. And don't worry. I'll be around somewhere. I'd like to see Rashid El Bey, please. I'm Mrs. Andrew Waller. Please to come in. Thank you. Then Saeed will leave purse and hat here. Then she will wait in crystal room. All right. Come, please. Please to be seated here. I go now. Tell Master. Thank you. <laughs> You are Mrs. Andrew Waller, who has come to seek advice from the all-seeing crystal. You are the holder of driver's license number 74592, issued in this city 18 days ago. Your original home was in Brightwood. Why, that's wonderful. It is wonderful only because through this power given to me, I am able to give help to those who come here to seek the answers to those things which they cannot know. Then maybe you can help me. It's very important. Very well, madame. Please to draw near and look into the crystal. (sighs) Do not allow your attention to waver for an instant. Mm. Oh, ball of ever-knowing light. Bring to your surface the future of the one who seeks the answers to questions as yet unknown. The world begins to clear. Picture is forming. I can see you, madame. You are wondering about a man. The man is nearly 35 years of age. He's over six feet tall, good-looking. He's engaged in a very dangerous occupation. His name is... Nikat. Well, it looks.
looks as though Nick's plan to have Patsy disguise herself as an older woman and gather evidence in Rashid El Bay's apartment has backfired. In a moment, we'll hear the conclusion of this adventure. Now back to the conclusion of the case of the Crystal Prophecy. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As we return to the story, Rashid El Bay says, If you move, I shall be forced to use this gun. Oh, you are very foolish to come here, my dear young spy. How, how did you know who I was? A very regrettable mistake on your part. You were careful to place forged documents in your purse, but you also left the real one in it. Your appointment at the beauty parlor but, in your real name. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And now I find it necessary to dispose of you. But, you wouldn't dare. You know that Nick will get you for it if it's the last thing he does. If Nick Carter tries to get me, it will be the last thing he ever does. I am much too skilled in the art of having people commit suicide to be caught by a mere detective, even a detective of Mr. Carter's reputation. Then you did kill those women. Of course, my dear. Why? What have they done to you? They were stubborn. They refused to pay to keep from committing suicide. So, they did kill themselves as I arranged. Oh. Hassan. Hassan. Yes, master. What kept you? I was in the rear, master. Take this girl out to the car. I will join you. <laughs> this boy is going to commit suicide. You're making a mistake. Nick knows all about you and what you're doing. I doubt that. But even so, it will do no good. You are on your way to your grave. Oh, no. Hassan, take her away. Yes, oh, master. No. You know what to do, Hassan. Yes, master. Go away. I am going to... <laughs> That's the first time you ever rang that gong with your head. Oh, Nick, is that you? It is. Oh, oh golly, I, I thought you were her son. That's what you're supposed to think. Now, I'll just rip off the master's false whiskers so that when Sergeant Madison gets here, he can book him for murder under his real name, Robert Winter. <laughs> I tell you, Sergeant, I was never so glad to hear Nick's voice. <laughs> but it was certainly queer to hear it coming from the man I thought was her son. <laughs> How'd you do it, Nick? I told Patsy I'd stick close to her, Matty. It was the only way I could manage it. Yeah. Well, I got into the apartment... Knocked out Hassan, made it a quick change so I could pass for him. Well, you certainly looked like the real thing to me. <laughs> I thought you were going to take me out and boil me in oil. Oh, oh Patsy, you know I wouldn't do that to you. Oh, Nick. Uh, tell me, how did you know that El Bay and Robert Winter were the same man? Well, you were partly responsible for that. Huh? I was? Yes. Don't you remember you said his spats were enough to convict him as far as you were concerned? Yes. Well, they did convict him. Yep. When the fake El Bay appeared at Mrs. Huntington's party, he made the mistake of wearing his spats under his robe. I caught a glimpse of him. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> and of course, Mrs. Langdon gave us a lot of help by grabbing up that invitation when she knew she was dying. I was calling attention to the party where I could find El Bay and his spats. <laughs> So Robert Winter would advise these women to consult El Bay, and then as El Bay, he would tell them they were going to commit suicide unless they paid him off. That's right. Huh. If they paid, they were all right. But if they refused... He'd kill them as a lesson to the others, honey. Huh, That's right, Matty. <laughs> well, that proves that no one should ever believe the things that are seen in a crystal ball. <laughs> Nick, how about a few advance hints about the adventure Old Dutch Cleanser is going to bring us next week? Well, Bob, before I tell you about next week's adventure, I want to remind our listeners that the Red Cross is carrying on in peace just as in war. In any disaster, flood, tornado, hurricane, or epidemic, you'll find the Red Cross on hand with shelter, food, clothing, and medical care. But this is just part of the story of the activities of the Red Cross, so it's no wonder that the Red Cross needs funds. And I want to urge everyone to give, and to give generously to the Red Cross. And I'm sure they will, Nick. So am I. But now, Nick, about next week's adventure. Okay, Bob, I'll give you a few highlights. A man telephoned me, greatly excited about a discovery he just made. And before Nick could get any details, the man had hung up. Which made me curious. And from then on, we got mixed up with red pencil lines in a phone book, a list of perfume shops... A junkyard, a trip to sea in a crowded barge, and a... Whoops, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Save something for next week. <laughs> now, what do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Smuggled Perfume. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cuddy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Remember, when you go shopping tomorrow, get the cleanser preferred by more women in America than any other. Old Dutch Cleanser. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Charles Stubblefield. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count... Use Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.